Hi there, and welcome to Plug and Goo's Power Review for Stylus RMX. Uh, my name is John Skippy Lemkul, and this is part two, all about parts. Part one was a simple introduction to give you an idea of what you can do with Stylus RMX. Part two is all about parts and what goes into making up a part and what things can you manipulate to change that part because that's one of the coolest things with RMX is how drastically you can change um, what it starts with. Uh, part three will be all about drum kits and multis and part four is all about tips and tricks for using my power pack for Stylus RMX. Um, if you don't know about my power packs, you can go to my website, plugandguru.com. Uh, there's a power pack and support. There's two videos for Native Instruments FM8. Um, this is number two of four videos I'm making for Stylus RMX. And then there's a power pack, which is 200 patches, which uh, I give you new drum kits, new multis. Um, there's never been any presets made for parts, and I made over 100 presets for parts, which is really cool. Um, and I'll show you how to use those in this episode a little bit, and then a whole lot more in part four as well as time designer templates, which change the feel of the drum groups. And we'll take a look at that a little bit in this episode. So let's get right into it. Here we go with parts. All right, so what is a part? A part technically is one of these eight slots, these eight numbers down here. There can be eight different drum grooves, eight different sound menus, or eight different drum sounds in a drum kit. And we'll explore each of those in their respective episodes. With part three, we'll be talking about drum kits and multis. So we'll get more into the whole multis of lots of drum loops being used all at one time, because that's one of the powers of RMX. But we're not going to, we're not going there today. We're just going to look at one part. And what can you do with one part? And uh, so for this one part, we're going to go to the user libraries. I want to use something from Beatropolis. So we're going to go to Too Busy and uh... there's our starting loop. And we're going to do the best we can to mangle this so that's almost unrecognizable. Let's go over to edit. So edit, edit is a whole complement of synthesizer parameters to work with. Filters, uh, pitch, you've got LFOs, you've got envelopes. And let's take a look at what we can do with these. So if we play this loop, pitch is the most basic starting point. This is semitones tuning. It's up two octaves or down. Now, if you make something really low in pitch, go over here to the amp, bring down the hold, and then you can decay to kill some of the extra wolfiness of it. You can shape it better this way. See? All right. Hold down command and click, and parameters go back to where they're supposed to be. Now, the other area that's most commonly used in the work that I've done with RMX when I'm like using this in a music situation is the master filter. It's a simplified version of the power filter in that to the right is a high pass filter and to the left it's a low pass filter. And emphasis basically is resonance. So as you hear, the low frequency is gone. And I can determine exactly how much body I want to have from this element. This is really important when you start dealing with multis, when you start having something that's, this is your low end, this is your body, this is your high end ear candy that you want. Then this master filter becomes really, really handy. Now to the left, it's a low pass filter. So all the high end's gone. We bring it resonance or emphasis. You can get it to like emphasize a certain frequency. Go back to amp, make it really short. kind of cool. Then you use EQ to like just emphasize that frequency a little bit more and you got a really cool sound. All right, so let's hold down command. Now the difference between the power filter and the master filter is that the master filter, think of these as like your EQ settings on your stereo. Um, whereas with power filter, you can get into a lot more of the synthesizer types of uses of filters. Um, you have LFOs and you have envelopes which can do some really great things. So let's turn on the loop. Let's go low pass filter. They have to drive really low because if you bring resonance up and you bring cutoff down, it's gonna get really loud. I'm not gonna do that, so I'm gonna bring up the drive a little bit, make it fuller, bring down cutoff. No resonance right now. Now, if you go to the filter envelope and you go to the depth and you bring this up, It 
it's a really short filter envelope. If I make it really long, then it's almost no different than the original. But by bringing down the decay, remember, every single sample in this drum loop is its individual sample. So by using the synthesizer parameters like fast envelopes, you can do all these cool little chiffy things. It would be impossible if this was just an audio file. You couldn't get this unless you had a special plugin that was doing that for you. But here it's very easy because it's just, it's there. You've also got control over pitch. So another cool thing to do, make it brighter, go to pitch. This is really great for chiffy things. Make it shorter. You just get a little tiny cool attack. You set it up just right. So there's all these kind of controls to work with. Let's take a look at the filter LFO. So let's bring this back down. By the way, let's talk also real quickly. Let's go filter, turn off the envelope. We've got resonance and then width. And width is kind of interesting because most synthesizers don't even give you a width parameter. But this gives you the control over the shape of the resonance, whether it's more this type of a shape or more like a U shape where it's got two frequencies. So if you bring it down to the bottom, that's like one frequency. So if you bring up resonance really high, it'll self oscillate. But if you bring up width, you're going to hear it split and it's going to go farther apart from each other. To be two like two different frequencies. It's cool. But I just want one frequency. So if you just want one frequency in your resonance, have your width at the bottom. If you want it to like be more complex. By the way, we're not there yet, but if you go to effects, there is an effect called power filter. And it's the exact same as that power filter. And if you hit the more button, you've got modulation controls for both cutoff and width. You don't have control with an LFO to control width from within the uh, edit page, but you do in the effect. So for those of you that are into that kind of thing, if you want to be modulating, if, if you hear that width changing going like, oh man, I'd love to be, I'd love to be going like, you can do that, but you have to use the uh, effect version of that filter since it's not available here. But you do have cutoff. So if we turn back on the loop, single loop, sing, or single frequency, go to filter and bring up the depth, Now, if you hit re-trigger, this says that it's going to have the very beginning of the LFO at beat 1, so it cycles and it's in tight sync, which is what we want. Now, rate. This is a good point to point out this little area right here. As I've moved things, you see that little box changes. That box is really important because that is your parameter information. There's no parameter number on any of these sliders. It's just a slider. So to see what the parameter is, you keep your eye right here in this little box to tell you this tells you right now that the LFO is cycling at a one-to-one -one cycle, which means it'll do a full cycle in one measure. So when I hit play, ding. Now if I wanted to do that in two cycles, go to rate and change it to two, two times. That's the bottom for the second one. That's back at the top. Here you have different shapes. So you could say like, this is a good shape here. Say like eighth notes. Because now it's got a cool attack to it. So you can make stuff like that. Easy. Kind of cool, huh? So that's the LFO. Now you can do this also to pan. That could be going on and go to pan. And I want to go to amp. Let's put it to a square wave. And let's set sync and re-trigger and have this be like half notes. And watch this. because it's a square wave, so it's up, it's down, up, down, up, down. So if you want, you can change your rate to be two times, so now it shows from one major, and then it's gone from major. Isn't that cool?